Hi, and welcome to this video series by Hubs, where we deep dive into different aspects of CNC machining uh, from different YouTube videos. I'm Michaela, I'm a mechanical engineer, and today we will look at the life cycle of a CNC component. So without further ado, let's jump right in. First, of course, you need a design that is optimized for CNC, like this base bracket here. Uh, you need to think about volumes that are hard to remove or some features that might be hard to machine and might require more complex and expensive processes. Uh, you can always upload your CAD file on the Hubs platform. Uh, and while you can also receive instant pricing, you can also get what we call a DFN feedback, which is super useful uh, and important to make sure your design can actually be made uh, with the selected technology. Step two, coding. So once you upload your design, it needs to be translated by the machine operator in what we call a G-code. A G-code is basically a set of commands that are used to machine the component. And it's loaded onto the machine, and the next step uh, would then be to get the right material and mount it inside the machine, as you can see right here. Uh, the material hasn't been machined yet, and that's what we call a blank, and it's normally a block of solid material, for example, aluminum. Choosing the right material should be done by the designer in the design phase. And that's because depending on the material that you have, you can have specific features. Uh, if you have a material that's, for example, plastic, you can machine longer and thinner holes with the tools that wouldn't break. Uh, but if you have a harder material, having such holes uh, would eventually break uh, the tool and damage the machine. Let's jump into the machining phase. Uh, once we place the block of material inside the machine, uh, then we can apply the G-code uh, to remove the material. It is important to highlight that not all the machining can be done uh, with the same tool, which is why most machines uh, have an automatic tool change, exactly uh, what we see right here. Different tools ultimately result in different end components. For example, if you consider smaller tools, like you see right here, uh, you will end up with a lower roughness and a higher level of detail, uh, but because the time to machine is higher, you will eventually incur into higher costs. Let's not forget also coolant is very important during the machining. Uh, in order to avoid the overheating of the tool and the component, it's important to apply the proper coolant when machining the part. When explaining machining, uh, we have to mention that different machining costs also come from the machine that we're using. For example, if you're using a three axis compared to five axis. We explore this in a high level of details in the video here, so don't forget to check it out. This machining, however, is not enough to deliver what we call an end component. And that's because every conventional machining process like uh, milling and turning uh, result in burrs. What's a burr, you may ask? Well, a burr is a ridge or protrusion of metal, and if you look close right here, that's exactly what we see, which ultimately compromises the quality of the finished part, and that's why it needs to be removed. The process to remove burrs is called deburring, and it can be both automatic and manual. The technician here is using a tool to manually scrape off the burr. Uh, it's cheap, but more time consuming. On the other hand, when we look at this mechanical deburring, we see a deburring machine grinding the burr off. Uh, while it's more expensive than manual deburring, it's more efficient, uh, so it's more popular option in machine. So once the part is machined and it's then deburred, uh, it undergoes quality control. Uh, and this one as well can be both manual or automatic. Monolog QC is the most common one, uh, and definitely the cheapest one. It relies on humans to use micrometers and calipers, most likely digital, uh, in order to manually measure uh, specific features that we're interested in. While it is the cheapest, however, and micrometers and calipers are relatively expensive, uh, they have an accuracy of plus or minus five microns, uh, which is good enough for most users. If you want to be more accurate, we can of course use an automatic way of measure your components. And that's exactly what we see here. Coordinate Measuring Machine, or CMM as it's mostly known, is an automatic way of measuring components with a tolerance of plus or minus one micron. Uh, it's very expensive and we'll look at this in another video with more details. So once the part has gone through QC, it either needs to undergo an additional surface finish like anodizing right here, or different types of coating. It's important to highlight that during longer shipping times, uh, the uncoated part can react with the moisture in the air and ultimately get oxidized. In order to prevent that, we can put oil on the part. However, that poses a problem for some machines and tools, and uh, it's a health hazard. So if your shipping time is longer, it's important to consider proper coating, such as powder coating, bluing, painting, anything that would avoid the part from oxidizing during shipping. So I hope you now have a better understanding of the life cycle of a component in CNC machining. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.